Sometimes at night, when my wife and I are watching TV before I uh, inevitably fall asleep like an old man, uh, she'll want to get up and go do something else. So I'll go get us, I don't know, ice cream from the kitchen or something like that. Or go get me ice cream from the kitchen, I hope. Anyway, uh, but when she leaves the room, she'll go like this. She'll point, look at me, and she'll go like that, which is her signal to remote control me so that I will pick up the remote and then pause whatever TV program that we're watching. Yes, she has remote control over me. I don't remember giving her permission to do that, but regardless, she controls me anyway. All right, so, but we do need to have remote control sometimes, right? And certainly we need to do that when it comes to doing something like remote desktop. We, we might need to reconnect to a computer that's already turned on. Okay, we can't turn it on remotely uh, using these kind of methods. Uh, but, so we got to have it already turned on, already has to be available, and then we can potentially make a connection to it. Now, the focus here with the remote desktop strictly is going to be on an individual user, okay, accessing their own computer. So, so I might be at home, for example, and I might be, you know, on my laptop here, on my couch. Here's some keys on the keyboard or cookie crumbs or something. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm on my uh, computer here. It could actually be a Mac computer, by the way, as well. There's a remote desktop client piece you can do from a Mac, for example, but we'll just say it's Windows for the time being. And over at the office, here's my desktop computer. And, you know, I'm here at home. It's 11 p.m. I'm about ready to turn in for the night. And then it occurs to me, oh, no, I forgot to fill out my, my TPS reports that the boss wants every Friday. And I forgot to do that. It's already 11 p.m. If the clock ch chimes 12, it'll be too late and I'll be in trouble. So, uh, by the way, if you don't know what a TPS report is, Google it, okay? It comes from an old uh, comedy uh, on television. Anyway, I think it was called Office Space, a movie or something like that. Anyway, so what I can do using remote desktop is I can make a connection, potentially, to my work computer, and then I'll be able to see its desktop on my screen here on my laptop. Could even be an iPad, by the way. So uh, I could do that, get my TPS report done. I have two-way connectivity here. I can see what's going on on the screen, so to speak, over on my work computer. I have full control over the keyboard and uh, apparently left-handed mouse here, and it's fully interactive, okay? So I can basically complete my TPS reports or whatever else it is that I need to do, the same as if I were sitting at that computer at work. Now, some things have to be set up in order to make this happen. What has to be done? We've got to give permissions set up, first of all. So, uh, whoever's doing this, whatever user is sitting at this keyboard and making this remote connection, uh, they have to have permission. They have to be a member of the remote desktop users security group, which exists on, gosh, every Windows computer. Okay, it's just there by default. So if this account is a member of that group, then they will have implicit permission to be able to do so. Uh, you do not have to add, however, an administrator. So the local admins, whoever's a member of the local administrators security group on this remote computer we're trying to make a connection to, any members of that security group already have permission. We don't have to manually add them into remote desktop users. Now, the way you configure this is you go into your system properties, thinking of Windows 11, for example, similar on Windows 10, and you'll go to remote desktop settings and then turn that on. Here's a screenshot right below. Also do bear in mind that it's better if you select this option to require devices to use network level authentication to connect. It's just a more secure way to connect. And you can imagine there's potential security problems here uh, because if someone is able to figure out my username and password, they might not have a badge or a key badge or identification or a key, whatever, to get into the building to access this computer. However, if they got my username and password, well, then they can certainly access this from anywhere in the world. But by the way, this also precludes that if we have a firewall here somewhere, you know, company firewall or whatever, that that, that firewall has to have a port open. So it has to have port 3389, that's TCP, 3389 open, and we have to have port 3389 open on my computer here and on my computer over here, okay? Normally, when you turn this on, it automatically flips that bit, if you will. It automatically opens up port 3389 here. Now, also, when I make this connection here, so I can see, you know, the desktop from my remote computer on my laptop while I'm at home right now uh, when I'm doing this, uh, what appears on the monitor, let me put a monitor in here somewhere. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but I'll put it down here at the bottom. Okay, what appears here on this monitor at work? 
So the cleaning crew's walking by. Can they see everything I'm doing, that I'm filling out my TPS reports? All they'll see is a lock screen on this computer, okay? Even if it was unlocked, prior to me establishing this remote desktop connection, it then suddenly becomes locked as soon as I make this connection. Now, what do you use to make the connection, okay? There's a little software piece that has to be involved. There's a few ways to do it. I could use a remote desktop connection, which is normally included in Windows, so it should, should be there. There's also a remote desktop app, which you can download. And especially if you're not using Windows, if this is a Mac, for example, uh, and that's what I often do, by the way, I often connect from my MacBook Pro, uh, then you can download the remote desktop app from the App Store. It's easily found. Uh, there's also a utility there called MSTSC, which is just the command line version. And that's really the command line version of this tool. All right. If you want to know more about that tool, and if you want to be very specific about some switches and options that are available with it, here's a URL for you to uh, investigate. And here it is, okay? We won't exhaust all of this right now, but you can just see things such as, uh, you can actually configure a file, or you might have multiple files. You might have multiple computers you connect to. By the way, uh, I could connect to servers the same way. So there might be servers that I have to remotely administer in different offices. I might have a couple of dozen of them, something like that. I can have a connection file, for example, for each one. And I haven't used it for a long time, but there's actually also an MMC console that you can use that has kind of a tree view on the left and you can pick you can pick different computers that you've added into that and then just click on them through the console. That's what I would recommend if you actually have to have multiple ones, but just look that up. Not part of our current discussion, but it is very handy to use and I've, I've used that in the past. You can specify uh, the resolution you want. There's the height and width for the resolution down here, for example, or if you want full screen mode, you can see right here, just use an F right there. Lots of different stuff. All right, so to illustrate all this, I'm gonna make a remote desktop connection. Now, let me show you what my environment is right here. Uh, this is my actual physical desktop that it's my recording computer, okay? That actually appears on the monitor right down over here, okay, from, where, from my own point of view, where I'm looking. Uh, now, I also have, let me drag this over, uh, Hyper-V open, and on Hyper-V, I've got a Windows 11 client right here that is currently running, okay? That's the computer I'm going to hopefully make a connection to, all right? So I'm going to minimize this. Let me uh, bring that machine up. This is that machine, all right, that I just showed you, Win11-01. Okay, now let's take a look here at my work computer, all right? The reason why we're here is I just want to show you that there's some things already in progress, things, some windows open and so forth. Uh, here's File Explorer. I just opened that. Here's Edge. I opened that. It's trying to get me the initial setup and all that stuff. Um, and oh, and I've also got the <laughs> a solitaire game going here. Um, can't let that go by. So anyway... Um, so what we, oh man, I can't, sorry, <laughs> a little distracted here. I couldn't let that sit there. Anyway, so the point here that I'm making is there's already stuff going on here on this computer. Now, what if I wanted to make a remote connection at some point in the future? Well, I'd have to get that done through settings and I would go down here to, in the initial screen there for settings, I'd go down here to remote desktop and I would turn this on. Now, before I turn that on, let me show you something else. Let me go to firewall settings. Uh, you don't have to do anything with this uh, specifically or directly. I'm gonna to go to advanced settings here. And you can see here that in the inbound rules, if I go into remote desktop settings, let me go down here, remote desktop, TCP, right there. Uh, then I'll just uh, expand this out a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. And we can see here that it again is port 3389 as I told you uh, previously, all right? But also notice that if I double click on this, or if I look over here to the left, there's no green check mark. Tr green check mark means that that port is enabled uh, and open. Here, you can see that it is not right now enabled, all right? So, going back into my settings, if I turn this on, then we'll just confirm this, and it tells me that anybody that's a member of remote desktop users here can do this. I've already got access because the trainer account is an administrator, okay? And that's what that's telling me right here. I can't zoom in here, uh, but that's what it says. Trainer already has access, right where my mouse pointer is. If I click add, I can add in additional users. And I can uh, browse from the domain if I'm a member of a domain, or I can browse from local accounts either way works. Now, once I've done that, let me go back into my firewall settings, and I'm gonna hit refresh over here on the left. And now we'll see that as I scroll up, it has turned on my remote desktop connection ports, all right? Now, on my home computer here, I'm typing remote desktop connection from the search bar. Uh, you can't, it's off screen, so you can't really see it. And it opens it up, and this is the IP address for that remote computer. Now, this does bring up an issue. I'll either have to know 
an IP address that's reachable from where I'm trying to access this computer, or uh, more likely you're gonna have a DNS resolution. Okay, so it'd be mycomputer.mycompany.com, something like that. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the IP address for the time being. Notice that if I expand this out to look at more options, and I do this frequently, I make this connection all the time, I can save this like to my desktop or something, and that way I can just double click on it and it will have everything I need there already. You can go to display settings, whether or not you want to use it full screen or to a certain resolution, whether you want to use all monitors. I actually have three monitors. Uh, the connection you want to use, the, the colors that you want to use, high quality. This also relates to your connection speed. Back in the days when we had modems, uh, we'd have to really mess with this sometimes to get ourselves a good connection. Otherwise, it was too sluggish. Nowadays, with high speed internet, most places, it's, it's not that much of an issue. Here, I can also configure remote settings. So here's remote audio. Do I want to play audio playback from that remote computer on this computer or on the remote computer? So if I win the solitaire game and it makes a big ta-da or whatever sound it makes, big music or whatever, that will play in my office uh, remotely there and the cleaning crew will have a panic. What was that? You know. Uh, so I'm going to play this on my computer and instead uh, wake up my wife. All right, remote audio recording can be done remotely or from this computer as well. Windows key combinations can apply as well here, and it can be this computer, the remote computer, or only when using full screen, all right? Can also use local devices and resources, like the clipboard, that's always very handy. Because I'm gonna have something here at home that I wanna put on my clipboard and then paste it onto the destination computer. Could be text, could be file, folders, whatever. There are also some security concerns there, though, because uh, we might not want that capability. Uh, for example, here's printers. What if I were to print out documents from work that were confidential and that when I did that and I printed them at home, which is what this will do right here with this check mark, if I do that, that might violate a security requirement that we have at work. I might print out, oh, human resources information with users' social security numbers on them or something like that. And if I do that at home, that might violate some, some issues there. So there's some more stuff we can do here as well, and you can see what some of the rest of these are, such as drives again bit of a security issue uh, here's a usb drive that i've got plugged into my computer it's up over on the other side of my monitor there uh, if it's got a virus on it or something like that that could infect my work computer through this remote desktop connection so again i'm not saying don't ever use any of these things i'm just saying be aware in advance you know you see some other options there that we could also use the experience will relate to the quality of my connection automatically as you can see right here okay and that's frequently what we use these days. That's usually the default, that's the default setting. But you can also adjust it to one of these others and you can look at those for, your, for yourself. On server authentication, we can get, this, this has to do with that network setting that I showed you when we uh, enabled the policy. On the advanced tab, we have the server authentication. Remember, this is the network level authentication. That's what this is about. And if we don't get that authentication, we can get a warning or do not connect or connect and don't warn me, okay, which is the least secure of them. It is also possible to set up a remote desktop gateway. Uh, that's not part of our current discussion, but that's something that IT can set up that will make all of these kind of a consolidated entry point for your remote desktop connections. Oops, I closed it by accident. Okay, anyway, so here it is. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make the connection and I'll just click on connect and it's gonna ask me for my credentials. Uh, if the username is not proper right here, you can just go to more choices and enter in a different account. Mine is the correct one. I can also choose remember me, but remember, that will also mean that anybody that walks by my computer, if it's unlocked here at home, uh, they can make this connection, okay? Uh, so you gotta keep that in mind. Uh, here, there's a certificate that's involved in this, and it's gonna be a self-signed certificate on the initial connection here. Uh, you can set up certificate authorities, certification authorities that will distribute certificates that can be trusted and so forth, another whole discussion. In our case, we just have to say whether or not I'm gonna trust that certificate that comes from this computer, Win1101. Okay, remember, it's a self-signed certificate. Since I set this all up, I know where it's coming from, and I'm okay with it. You can also view the certificate if you have further concerns that you want to look into here and look at all of its details and so forth. But I'll go ahead and say yes. And then now, I'm making this connection. And what do you know, but I've got the same exact windows open that I did before, okay? So I've got my remote desktop settings open. I've got my file explorer. What else did I have? Oh, uh, uh, Edge is open right here. Oh, and my Solitaire game, okay? So that we're still able to play. I'm probably missing something here, but you guys are saying, put the three on this or whatever. Uh, oh gosh, I just can't let this go, okay? 
Oh, good. I've got another ace. All right. Anyway, you get the idea there. And I am now connected to this computer from home or from wherever, really. Any place I can get a, a connection, uh, be on the other side of the world or whatever, uh, I'm now able to make this connection. And it's very convenient. The focus is on productivity. It's not really a help desk thing. And it's a one user connection. So that also means if this was a computer that multiple people could be using, then if there are two or more users logged onto that computer at the time I initiate this remote desktop connection, it will log off those other users. Okay, so, so bear that in mind. All right, looks like my wife is remote controlling me right now and has told me that she wants me to order her Starbucks. I wish I had somebody I could remote control. Gee, what a deal. All right, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. Also, if you're new to IT or are interested in an IT career, visit cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.